everyone is writing a story. How you lived this life is the story you'll leave. But your love for another shows what you believed. Your story is powerful because God is the author. You, the clay, the son, and the daughter. As the chapters of your story unfold, what's a story if it goes untold? Everyone has a story. has a story. This, uh, this series that we're, we're beginning, Life-Changing Stories, um, it isn't by happenstance. <laughs> let, me, let me give you a little vision for what we're, what we're doing with this, this series, because we've got, we got Easter showing up here pretty soon. And uh, that's, a, wh- woo. yeah, that's exciting. It's actually really exciting. <laughs> uh, Easter's showing up, um, and we've got all kinds of opportunities to, to attend Easter, and we'll get into that here after a bit. But I want, I want to give you a little bit of a insight into into what this series is all about. There's two things that we want you to, to walk away with and understand going into this. The first one is what we want you to know is this, is that God is writing a story worth sharing in your life. Just take a moment and let that sink in. God is writing a story worth sharing in your life. And what we want you to do come away with and exercise from that is that is to begin to share your story that that's incredibly important that's how more stories are written that's how more stories are written people hearing that what God really is doing is happening that that, that's the story of your life can impact the story of somebody else So over the next three weeks, we want to spend some time sharing some life-changing stories with you. Stories that God has been writing in people's lives here in this church. People you may know. Familiar faces for you. Stories of people just like you and me. Everyday, ordinary people. God is writing a story through them, and they're going to share their story. There's people like, like Jason, who you're going to hear from here in just a moment. Jason shares his story, who through an invitation came to church, and God took it from there. So, watch this. My name is Jason Bolenball, and this is my story. I didn't go to church for a long time, and uh, in my first marriage, I uh, went for about two years and just went through the motions, you know, sat in the pew, and then I met my second wife, and she was already going to church, and I went to decide to go to church with her, and I feel like I was doing a walk for myself through the church. During that period, I had almost destroyed my marriage. Something I wasn't proud of, but it led to me and my wife being separated for six months. It was a long road, but God had better plans for us. Me and my wife were back together again, working on things, but still not going to church. Hadn't been to church since 2013. Went back this last October. Michelle had mentioned uh, Life Changing Church, and I kind of hemmed for a couple weeks, just like a guy. 
And uh, Don Brown had mentioned that he would be in the service that we went to so he'd know somebody that, so that we would know somebody that was here. I've uh, known Jason and his family for many years and I've seen them, I believe it was a post on Facebook where they were searching for churches. And uh, I invited them to our church, Life Changing Church. I told him I showed up at the nine o'clock service and I'd be waiting at the door for him. And uh, that's what they did. And I finally said, okay. And we ended up coming. And first thing I seen sitting, watching the screen was the intro. And it really showed that this church accepts you as who you are. It was a picture of a church with empty pews and a man sitting in a truck, just sitting there like every day average Joe, you know, plaid shirt, hat. To see that kind of thing as an intro, it really moved me the very first week. So guess what I did the second week? I turned my feet in two weeks, hadn't been to church in eight years. It was a start. It was, it was my start. I did journey, went through that. That was awesome. And decided to do rhythm. And once again, awesome. These classes, just, just going through these classes with other people and just going through the lessons and listening to the pastors and rhythm, it just, that helps so much. So the end of, I think it was January, yes, is when I got baptized. I'm Jason Bolenball. Old me is washed away with the water. With Jesus, the new me is reborn with hope, faith, and humbleness. I belong to Jesus. After I got baptized, I ended up joining Fight Club. And that's one of the best things I could have done. To be able to open up to someone the way the world says we probably shouldn't. It's, it, it lifts a huge weight off your back. And it's helped me definitely along the way. Uh, this last weekend, we signed up for, I signed up for uh, serving uh, as an usher. What it's doing for my kids coming to church and being involved in doing a true walk with God, it's helping them to realize what's important in life. Uh, my daughter Shay, she has a notebook that out of nowhere, just one night, she got put to bed, couldn't sleep, and she ended up turning her LED lights on and she drew a picture. God, thank you for today. It has been the best day ever. I get to get a toy or two or three. <laughs> and God, you help me all the time. You are the best ever. God, thank you for pushing me to do that to that point where I try to be good sometimes. Bless you, God. Amen. It astounded me. I, I couldn't have been more happy. This walk, it's not easy. It's never gonna be easy. This is why we need to do this together. And this has helped me greatly to turn my feet, to start believing and giving things to God. This is my story. And I hope this may help someone in their walk, as it has helped me.
powerful points in that story that he just shared, that Jason just shared, was, was the very end there. <laughs> so that's my story. It's amazing what, what God can do. What God is doing in each and every one of our lives. A yes to an invitation led to lives being changed, not just for Jason, but for his family, their relationship with his wife, his children. His story, although he may feel like it didn't have a whole lot of impact, is changing people's lives. That's how good God is in the midst of all of this. Invitation is so incredibly important. As we as we're moving towards Easter, which is an am- amazing and powerful opportunity to celebrate, it is also one of the two times each year that people are willing to say yes to go to church. And we're incredibly we're being incredibly intentional about this Easter. That we are going to we're going to serve those who don't go to church. So they may understand what's going on. And why is this, why are we doing this? Well, obviously because that's what we've been called to do. But also, this is the opportunity that we've been given. I mean, it happens through simple invitation. The people will come to one to two, one or two times each year. They'll be willing to say yes. But actually, there's, there's stats, there's statistics that say that in a recent Barna survey, that 82% of people say they would inte- attend church if invited by a friend. That's why we're doing these stories. Because Jason's story matters. Your story matters. There are people that are witnessing your story right now. That's why we're going to have 12 Easter gatherings. That's why we're going to have, to choose from, that's why we're going to have in two campuses, four different services, two on Saturday, five and seven, two on Sunday, nine and 11. That's why we're going to have two church where you are services, opportunities for our short stories to be shared to so people can hear about the goodness of God. Because 82% of people, when invited by somebody that they know, will say yes. They will say yes. Jason is one of those 82% that a friend invited him and he said yes. Don invited him to come along and he came. And then guess what happened? Jesus took it from there. (laughs) Those conversations are incredibly important. Your interactions every day are incredibly important. We don't take those those conversations for granted. They aren't coincidence. We don't take them lightly. You, me, we were rescued from something. We have been rescued from something. We approach these conversations incredibly intentionally. And because of that invitation, that investment that that Don put, that intentional reach out, the purposeful conversation, that what we can understand is that in our lives, when we're willing to put ourselves out there and we're willing to have these conversations, to invite people into our lives, into what we're experiencing, we we are able to do this because we realize that we have been rescued to be a rescuer. I'm rescued to be a rescuer. We say that a lot around here, don't we? But it is true. It is true. We have been rescued to be a rescuer. Rescue, because here's, here's the thing. Here's what's important to understand. Rescue isn't just about receiving rescue. Rescue is about being rescue. Being rescued to become a rescuer. We have been, re- we have been rescued from our shame from our addiction, from our depression. We've been, we've been rescued from our, the unforgiveness that we've experienced. We're been re- we've been rescued from our hurt, our insecurity. We're rescued from our, our depression, our sin. We're rescued from death and the grave. We have been rescued. 
And a, and a truth that is so good as that, it's, it's that not just for our benefit, but it is for the benefit of others as well. That we would share this, that we wouldn't keep this to ourselves, but that we would understand that we have been rescued to be a, become a rescue ourselves. The story of how much God has impacted your life and brought you from here to here, whatever that is, has great impact. It is incredibly persuasive because people around you see it happening. People are watching you. Young, old, stranger, neighbor, friend, family, they're watching this take place. Don knew that. Don knew that, and so he invited Jason. Now Jason and his family, now they're, they're, having a, they're writing a st- their story is being written about their lives as well. That's what rescue to be a rescuer is all about. It's, it's helping others write the next chapter of the better life story that God has for them. There are instances that we can see that, that we can see this. We take this incredibly important because Jesus took this incredibly important. We see this in the scene of the, the Samaritan woman who's sitting by a well at a, at a time where there's not very many people around. It's probably just her. Jesus encounters her and offers her something that she can't explain. Offers a, a life, a life full and a life eternal. But the water that she's drawing from from the well, well, she'll still be thirsty again, but the water that he's offering for her, she'll never thirst again. And after Jesus spoke to her and told her a better life is in him was waiting, is, and is waiting for her to say yes, when he told her to leave her life of sin and then and follow him, I want you to look at what she did. You can find this in John chapter 4, verses 28 and 29. After Jesus spoke to her, then, leaving her water jar, the woman went back to town and said to the people, Come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be Christ? This woman experienced something. She went there for a reason. She went there to to retrieve life-sustaining water. And she left without it. Because what she received from Jesus would forever sustain her. It was far greater that she would go and share that this man knew her story and loved her anyway and cared about her anyway. Our stories are similar. Our stories of God's redemption and power at work in our lives are, well, they're the most influential gifts that we can give to people. People can debate all kinds of facts and and wisdom and knowledge. They can try to debate all of this, all that they possibly can. What they cannot debate is the stories that are being told from people's lives. You can't debate that. This is what I have experienced. This is what God has done in my life. And it is the greatest gift that we could ever give to somebody is to share what God has done in our lives. Who do we share that with, right? How? How? Can I say, can I, say I think the, the, one of the most precious gifts that we could ever share, it, could be with, it should be with our children. It should be with our next generation. It should be with those that are going to be the church co- to come. That we should be willing to share our stories. The psalmist writes about this, talking about the wondrous deeds that God has, has performed. He says, th- he says this in Psalm 78, 4. He says, we will not hide them from our children, speaking of the deeds the glorious deeds that God has done. But we'll tell the next generation the glorious deeds of the Lord, his power and the wonders that he has done. Do not doubt the power of your story and your children's lives. It gives them a floor to stand upon and to begin to step up from. We see it not just with our children, but with our families. Also, when Jesus told a man that he healed to return home and tell how much God has done for you. So the man went away and told all over town how much Jesus has done for him. He went home and he shared the goodness of God, the goodness of Jesus. It doesn't stop there, though. It starts. 
It doesn't stop there, though, because we're not just supposed to share with those that are close to us, but we're supposed to share to the entire world around us. We see that in these words that Jesus spoke to his disciples in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. What Christ has done in your life, what Jesus has done in your life, has power and impact for those around you and all across the world. Jesus wouldn't call us to this if that weren't the case. The great deception that we experience, the greatest challenge that we, we experience is over the, it's overcoming the thoughts that you have nothing to offer, that your story doesn't matter, that I'm nobody. It's not true. It's not true. Because that's my story. Friends, it, your story matters. It matters greatly. And you may be, you, you, it's understandable that we would experience this because we had to be rescued, didn't we? And if I have been rescued, how can I, how could I even rescue, how can I rescue someone else? How could I be a part of that? I don't, ha I don't know anything. I haven't experienced, I don't, I, I, I don't know. What, but I, what I love is how pa Paul, he writes this letter to the, the Corinthian church it's a second letter that he's written to him. And when he writes, I think it helps us, ex helps us to deal with the thoughts and the feelings of insecurity and feeling incapable. Incapable. When he, when he tells us this in, in chapter 5, beginning in verse 17, he says this, Therefore, if anyone, there's no exception, but Nate, nothing's happened to me. My, my story doesn't have a big crescendo. Some people you may be around you, you, you that you see and experience and hear their stories. Well, that's an amazing story. What, what he says is right here, if anyone is in Christ, anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. A story is being written in your life when you say yes to Jesus. All this is from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. I have to pause for a moment because that is an important statement that is Paul has made to the church of Corinth and is speaking directly to us as well. That we, when we say yes to Jesus, we have been reconciled with God, which is amazing. But he's not done yet. It's not just salvation. It's not just you being reconciled with God. He loves us so much that he gives us purpose beyond that. He gives us the ministry of reconciliation. But Nate, I'm not a minister. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. You know what that message is? Listen, you don't have to have all the theological explanation. You know, what that, you know what that message of reconciliation is? It's what God has done in your life. It's how he reconciled you to him. It's how Jesus took the full weight of your sin and bled for, for your salvation, but for your fullness of life here and now. That is the message that, we, that when you say yes to Jesus, we all have. We all have that. And he has committed us, he has commissioned us to this message, to share this message. We are therefore Christ ambassadors. Whew. We are his representation. We are Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. He's working through each and every one of us, through our stories. We implore you on Christ's behalf. <laughs> Be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. 
our stories speak to speak this truth that there's nothing that we've done. It's everything that he's done. And we get to share that. The weight is off, friends. You don't have to do anything spectacular. You just have to be willing to share the story. But what's my story? What do I share? You may ask, so what story do I have to share? I think it starts with, we could start with this, sharing the comfort you've received. Sharing the comfort that you have received. The Father of compassion comforts, strengthens, encourages, and fills us with hope during times of struggle. If you've ever, if you said yes to Jesus, and if you walked out any piece of your life, you know that struggle comes. And what he offers is comfort in the midst of that, in the midst of pain, in the midst of sorrow. There's comfort that he offers with this. And all he asked in turn was that we would comfort others with the comfort that we've received. God who comforts us all in our affliction so that this letter that Paul is writing to the Corinthians saying, hey, listen, you've been comforted. Not just so you would be comforted, but so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any inf- affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Is there somebody that's walking down a path that you've walked down that need comfort? There probably is, isn't there? So we share the comfort that we received. How about this? We share the hope you found in believing. You share the hope that you have. You share the fact that there may have been a time in your life where you thought there is nothing. There's nothing more. There's nothing better. I have nothing to offer. I'm done. This is the end. This is all of it. And then, but God, but Jesus, you began to realize it. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. That we would look around, we would realize, hey, it's pretty messy outside. It's pretty messy around here. I got some stuff in my life that is pretty messy. Not sure what's going to happen in the world. I don't know if this is the end. I don't know if there's any hope. I don't know what's next. I don't know any of these things. But then we realize that we have Jesus who gave his life not just for today, not just for eternity, but for today. But the greatest part is there's eternity with him when we say yes to him. And he tells us to abound in hope. We should abound. That's not, that's a big word. Abound. What does that look like? Abound. Abound. We should be excited. We have hope. We have hope. Sorry, that was probably scary. <laughs> oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurt later. That's okay. But literally, let your hope just flow out of you. Realize what God is doing. How do we, how do we, how do we share our story? We share the joy that gives you strength. You share the fact that God has taken great joy in his reconciliation of relationship with you. Because of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, you have relationship with God. That's an amazing thing. That's a great joy. That's something that we should be incredibly joyful about. Share the joy you, you, gives you strength. Be full of joy in the Lord always. I will say again, be full of joy. Let everyone see that you are gentle and kind. The Lord is coming soon. Be filled with joy because we know the end of the story. Share the peace that goes beyond understanding. When people ask, how are you holding it together? You share how you're holding it together. You aren't. He is. That Jesus is the one holding it together. Jesus says in, in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. 
He gives peace that the world does not give. Listen, if you have ever sought out peace from the world and everything that it offers, you realize it's not there. We just got to turn the TV on, right? We just, we understand that. So when people are going around like, what are you? People are watching. They're taking in your story. And they're noting. They're noting when they see peace that doesn't make sense. That joy that abounds, that it just doesn't, or hope that abounds, that joy that strengthens. They notice when you, when you are comforted in some of the worst times of your life that there is, you found comfort. People take note. And then we have an opportunity to share that. And I know I say that, and you go, well, you make it sound pretty easy, mate. I know, and, and it's not easy. If you can't muster up, if for whatever reason you can't muster up the, the strength or the courage to, to share or the words to share any of those things to anyone. Because th- th- it isn't easy. Is it meant to necessarily be easy? That's why you see in these scriptures, it talks about the, by the power of the Holy Spirit. It talks about the fact that you, you can't do this on your own. That you have to be connected to God. That if your sh- story is really, really being changed by God then that's going to be necessary. So if you, if you can't quite get to there, and I can understand that, if you can't share any of those things quite yet, share your church. Share the reason that you show up every Sunday. Share. Share that. The psalmist writes in Psalm 66, 5, Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. Many of you are here today because somebody invited you. I am here today. I'm here today because somebody invited my wife. And she kicked me in the pants and made me come along. An invitation is incredibly and powerful. That's why when you sat down, you had to pull something out of your seat. That's why we have 12, that's why we're having 12 opportunities for people to find a service. Because there's hope to be had. An invitation can be given. I'll come back to that in just a moment. Because here's what we have to, here's what we, if we're going to walk away from this and realize that our stories matter. And our stories can have impact in people's lives. And that we have been rescued to be a rescuer. The question that we need to ask ourselves, and it's a very practical question, who will I rescue? Who is it in my life that that potentially needs rescue? Whether it's through me sharing my life, sharing the hope that I have, whether it's invitation to church, to come to church and to to hear the hope that I have, whatever it may be, that invitation card that you have right there, we make it very, it's very simple to be able to go and say, hey, I'd love for you to come to church. But it's so much more important when we have somebody in mind. It's so much more. 82% of people will say yes to coming to church if it's invited by a friend or somebody that they know. It may be be a waitress at a restaurant you frequent. And you sign a nice big tip and place that invitation card there. Don't put it there if you don't tip well. (laughs) Don't do it. I won't claim you. No, I'm just kidding. But what if we prayerfully considered those people in our life who need to hear about Jesus? Listen, I'm not talking about people who go to church somewhere else. I'm not, I'm not saying that invitation's for them. I'm talking it's people, it's people who don't know. This church has been around and it's been built on the fact that we're searching after those who don't go to church anywhere. And so that invitation card, if it can land in the hands of somebody who doesn't go to church, who needs to hear the hope, would you prayerfully consider that? Would you take the challenge that we would not leave empty seats next to us at Easter? 
when you look, look to the left or the right and you see empty seats next to you, would you take the challenge and say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fill this seat. But Nate, what if I don't have a seat? Well, maybe you give it up because you know Jesus. <laughs> Easter, we are, going, we are searching after those who don't know who Jesus is. And we're not shy about it. We're not going to be abashed about that. Because there is hope, and it is too good to keep to ourselves. And we are going to share that for those who don't know who he is. And listen, I've gotten those cards. I put them in my wallet. And I've done nothing with them before. So today, as we, as we wrap this up, Maybe in the week to come, you need a reminder. Maybe you need some motivation. Maybe when it comes to Thursday or Friday, you need to be reminded that you have been rescued. And that rescue wasn't just for you, but it was for you to be a part of rescuing others. Maybe you need that in your life. And so today, I want to leave you with this scripture right here in Psalm 71, 15 through 16. I would encourage you, write it down. Post it somewhere that you can see it. Take a picture of it. I don't want to be in the picture, so take a picture of it. All right? Get life notes on the way out. I don't know what it is, but place it in front of you. Read it every single day and be reminded that you have been rescued to be a rescuer. Let this motivate you. My mouth will tell of your righteous acts, of your deeds of salvation all the day, for their number is past my knowledge. With the mighty deeds of the Lord God, I will come, listen to this right here, I will remind them of your righteousness and yours alone. Listen to me. You're allowed to be broken and still share the hope that you have. You can be a mess and say, but Jesus. You can have that in your life. It doesn't matter where you are. If you said yes to Jesus and you've moved past that stuff that you've been stuck in and you're starting to follow after him, you have just as much right to offering that invitation as somebody who's been following Jesus out the womb, right? Don't undersell that to yourself. This is what we get to be a part of. The hope that we have, we are allowed to share it. The comfort that we've received, we're allowed to share that. The peace that does not make any sense, we're allowed to share that with others. The joy that we're allowed to share all of these things with people, and we don't have to feel bad about it because they need it too. That's what we get to do. I look forward to to hearing more of your stories. These three stories that we're going to share. They're in an ocean of other stories that, have taken, that are taking place right now. Your story matters. So don't keep it to yourself. Let's pray.